Today, though, CNN announced it had finalized the rules for your first presidential debate, now less than two weeks away with both your campaign and the Biden campaign. Look, we know you go into this debate with a whole host of things to go after President Biden on, whether it's illegal immigration, mm -hmm. uh, you talk about an economy that's not working for many Americans, and the wars in Ukraine and Israel, which you say would not have happened under your leadership. Okay. I know you're ready for this. President Biden will go after you on the topics of January 6th and your criminal conviction in New York. How do you plan on responding to those attacks? Well, first of all, this conviction was a Democrat hoax started by him as election interference and uh, really attacking a political opponent never been seen before in this country. Uh, it's done by third world countries, by banana republics, never been done by this country. And it's a disgrace. And he's a disgrace. I mean, with his record and uh, his family's record, he's a disgrace to have done it. And the gloves have come off because of it. And frankly, uh, it allows you to speak more freely. Look, he's the worst president in the history of our country. He makes uh, Jimmy Carter look brilliant, frankly, the Carter administration. And uh, he is just a disaster. Uh, now we have uh, Russian ships and submarines uh, right off the coast of Miami and Cuba, just a few minutes away. It's a, just a disaster what, what this man has done to our country with allowing millions and millions of people to pour in unvetted, unchecked. And they come from jails and they come from mental institutions all over the world. They're emptying out their criminals. They're emptying out their people with mental problems into our country. And he's allowing it to happen by the millions. And I tell you, he is just a disastrous president. And if we don't get him out, we've got ourselves a real, I mean, we already have a mess, believe me. I'll get it solved, but it's just getting worse by the day when you look at what's happening to our country. Think of it, Russian ships circling Cuba. It's unbelievable. Mr. President, we're here in Detroit today. Hundreds of people coming out here in the highest black population city in the country to see you. Uh, what kind of economic policies will you enact as president that will help communities like this one, which are still trying to rebound after decades of decay? How will you help black and Latino voters this well, election? We've already done it with the most successful program probably there has been uh, for black and, and Latino, but in particular, in this case, black, the Opportunity Zones. And they have been incredible. Did that with Tim Scott, senator from South Carolina. And uh, it's been a tremendous, almost a miracle. It's been one of the most, uh, probably the most successful program of its kind ever tried. We're very honored by it. But we had uh, the best economy. Uh, blacks were working at levels never seen before. Now their wages are way down. And what's happening is the illegals coming in, they're taking their jobs. The black population and Hispanic population is more affected by the Latinos coming into our country than anybody. And I'll add somebody else or some other group, unions. Unions are being hurt terribly. When you have 15, 16 million people coming into the country, the unions are being decimated. And they don't like talking about it, but that's what's happening. They're being decimated by the Biden policies, but also by millions of people pouring into the country. You've received more black support than any president, chill candidate in modern history. Uh, you mentioned one name, Tim Scott, one of several names that you've mentioned or have been mentioned for a vice president. I know you said that you won't announce that pick until the convention next month. Uh, but when it comes to choosing a vice president, sir, how important is executive experience, whether it's in business like yourself or in government? Well, I think it's very important. It's something that comes natural to some and it comes very unnaturally to others, but executive experience is important. But uh, a president is sort of covers all aspects. It's politics, it's uh, executive, it's executive and knowing what to do and knowing the feel of a nation and the touch and all these different qualities. You need everything. And you know, Tim is a very good man and we have a lot of good people that we're looking at and we'll be announcing probably during the convention. But the most important thing, and I've said this quite a bit, and I guess a lot of people would say it, is if something should happen, something bad, I guess, would it would have to be. But if something should happen, we have to have somebody that can step right in and do a great job as president. That's the most. Secondly, if, if they can help get you elected, that's good. But typically, that never happens. Uh, it's up to the president or the one running for president. Uh, if you look back in history, you'll see virtually no vice president that made that much of a difference in terms of the election. The most important thing you can do is get somebody that will be a great president just in case it should be needed. 
You mentioned unity, huge theme for you this week. Uh, there was a fist bump, I believe, with Senator McConnell down in Washington. Um, you also supported Larry Hogan for his Senate campaign in Maryland. Uh, this is a man who hasn't supported you in the past. You're supporting him, however. Uh, what is it about getting Larry Hogan elected? And how do you feel about him not giving you the same endorsement? Well, I don't know. I heard it was somebody from his staff, and it wasn't him that did that or said the negative thing. And, you know, he's... Uh, obviously of a little bit different persuasion than me, but I think having Larry Hogan as opposed to a Democrat would be a good thing. And we'll see where it goes, and let's see what he says. I have not heard from him. I've heard from somebody in his staff, maybe that staff person. You know, somebody in my staff said something very bad about Larry, and uh, I thought maybe we should try and get along. But uh, we'll see what Larry has to say. I have not spoken to him at all. And if he has a good chance of winning, that's very important. Right, we're clearing up misconceptions today. One, th one, I do want to give you a chance to talk about Milwaukee. A lot of rumors this week, half-truths. What did he say? What didn't he say? When it comes to Milwaukee, home to the GOP convention next month, what are your thoughts in the all-important swing state well, Wisconsin? I, I put out a truth just now because I heard the Democrats lie. That's all they can do. They have bad policies, open borders, bad military. The whole thing, everything they do is bad. Uh, all electric cars, they want to have everyone driving an electric car, all made in China. Don't go far enough, as you know. They don't go far. And they cost a lot of money. The whole thing is ridiculous. Now they're talking about your washing machines. They want to give them no water dishwashing machines. Every day they have something new. Uh, they have no policy, but all they do is lie. They make up stories. That's a totally made up story. I picked Milwaukee. I had a lot of choices. A lot of places wanted it, obviously, with the money that it brings and the economics and the economic development even that it brings. I had a lot of choices. I picked Milwaukee. Never said anything bad about Milwaukee other than something I say about a lot of cities, especially Democrat-run cities, is that we want to keep the vote honest. And I hope that Milwaukee is going to keep the vote honest. And if they do, I'm going to really love it. But I was the one that picked Milwaukee, and it's just another lie. They lied about soldiers. They lied about uh, just about everything. Because when you have a candidate like Biden that doesn't know he's around, that doesn't know is he still living? I mean, you, I saw the mess in Europe, that mess. I've never seen anything like it, where he doesn't even know where the hell he is. They have to lie, because, frankly, if they don't, they have no chance of getting elected. And it's a shame, frankly, when I hear a story like that. Milwaukee bothered me, because when you're the one that picked it, and we have great spirit going into Milwaukee, and the people of Wisconsin, as you know, we're leading in the polls. So what do they do? They lie, and they make up a story that I said something bad about Milwaukee. And I just ask you this, who would do that? Who would say something bad about a place that you want to win, you want to win over? The only thing I say is I want to keep this election nice and honest. And if we do that, I'm going to be very happy. But I, I love Milwaukee, and that's why I picked it. All right, Mr. President, you get a roundtable to get to. Good luck today. Godspeed Thank the rest you. of the Thank way. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Back to you.